This is a continuation of our discussion last time on financial statement analysis. As of this point, okay, you should already know the different methods used in financial statement analysis. Okay. As a review, you have your time series or your horizontal analysis. You have your cross-sectional or vertical analysis, ratio analysis, and you have your dew point analysis. This presentation focuses on the increase-decrease method, also known as your comparative financial statement approach, which includes two years analysis. Under the increase-decrease method, okay, you can actually compare your financial statements from year one and year two. Now, depending on the type of decision that you're going to make, okay, you can just choose some accounts which you think are relevant to you. Now, in our example, okay, we are going to evaluate the asset management okay, of this company. That's why we decided to choose okay, your basic working capital components such as cash, marketable securities, accounts receivable, inventories, prepayments, and accounts payable. Now, assuming you have the following figures for year one and year two. In this case, we are going to consider year two as our current year, while year one will be our base year. What is a base year? A base year is actually your standard year. Yung peg, kumbaga. When we say standard year, okay, this will be the basis for the evaluation. And if the problem is silent, we normally use the earlier year. So in this case, we're going to use year one as our base year. Your year two can also be your base year if you're going to evaluate your earlier years. Okay? And under the assumption that year two will be your normal operation as the basis for our standard. But anyway, for our example, let's use a pen and let's use this and mark your year one as your base year, okay? And this one will be our current year. Now, the first step in your increase-decrease method is to get the difference of the current year with your base year, okay? So, you simply less your year one amounts okay, from your year two amounts and you will get that change. The second step will be to reflect this as a percentage of your base year. So you divide the difference by your base year figures and you get the following. Now normally other books will tell you that okay an increase in asset is considered as favorable while a decrease no decrease in liabilities are also considered as favorable okay so if you try to mark this okay these are favorable unfavorable favorable because your assets increased and this one is favorable because this one is a liability okay now normally okay some would say aha as a whole this is already favorable why because that's 4 out of 6. But uh, take note, okay, it doesn't work that way. Uh, the increase-decrease method, okay, you have to look at the relationship of your accounts. Where did the increase came from? Okay, and where where did it go? Okay, so, bakit meron tayong increase na 10%? And what's the effect of this with the increase of 200 and 100% on this part? Yan, ang titignan natin. Okay. So, ganun ba siya talaga? What's the story behind these accounts? Okay. Normally, when you start a business, okay, the first asset that you're going to invest will be your cash. So, if you are into merchandising, okay, after investing cash, the next thing that you will do is to buy inventories. Okay. So, let's try to put that. Buy inventories. Okay, of course, we're not going to buy for the sake of collecting, no? We're going to buy inventories because we want to add a markup and sell them. So, for example, if you buy this at 5 pesos and sell them for 6 pesos, you will have a profit 
of one peso for every complete transaction. This is your basic operating cycle, assuming that you only have cash and inventories, no? And in this cycle, you have the buying activity and the selling activity. Sometimes, okay, your operations, especially in the selling activity, okay, will not allow you to convert all of your sales or all of your inventories into cash. Sometimes, you have to sell your inventories on account, okay? So, what will happen? Okay. Instead of your inventories being converted into cash, they will be converted into accounts receivable first. But eventually, once these accounts receivables are collected, it will now become a part of your cash. Okay, so if you try to put that together, you use your cash to buy inventories, okay, sell your inventories for cash, okay, and sometimes you sell your inventories on account, okay, you will have your AR and eventually it will be converted into cash, okay. Now, you want this cycle to be as fast as possible, okay? You want to buy your inventories and sell them as fast as possible so that you will realize the profits. If they are sold on account, you want to collect them as fast as possible, okay? So that you will have cash for your operations. And the faster your cycle is, habang mas malaki yung, mas mabilis operating cycle mo, Okay, your cash will increase. Now, what about the other accounts, like your accounts payable? Okay, in cases wherein there is not enough cash to cover your inventory requirements, what do you do? You ask your supplier to lend you the inventories. That's the job of accounts payable. Okay, now you sell your inventories to cash. If not, you sell them on account. Uh huh. It's there. And eventually, your accounts receivable will be collected. Yeah. You want this to be fast, of course. Okay. If you have enough cash to pay for your accounts payable, what do you do? You don't pay for your accounts payable yet. No, not yet. You use your cash okay, to buy inventories, sell your inventories, and then collect the sales you want this to happen as fast as possible now okay your cash will increase of course if you can do that what will happen next before your suppliers get mad <laughs> of course that's the time you have to pay them now what i mean is before you become unethical with your suppliers of course you have to pay your liabilities once these are paid Okay, syempre, bababa ngayon yung accounts payable mo. Your accounts payable will go down. This is the part wherein you want it to be slower. You want the inflows of assets to be faster, but you want the outflow or the disbursement to be slower. If that's the case, your cash will increase. Okay. Now, what, the, what about the role of these two? Okay. So, let's continue. If your cash will increase, of course, you don't want idle assets. Your cash will be invested to marketable securities for additional profits, okay? Just in case you're short of cash and that you cannot um, obtain loans from your suppliers, that's the best time for you to liquidate your marketable securities to meet your cash requirements. Okay, so that's the role of marketable securities. What about your property, plant, and equipment? Your property, plant, and equipment is not intended to be converted into cash. It's supposed to be consumed. Okay? That's why most of the time, this is taken for granted. Why analysts would say it's not so important because you're not going to convert that into cash. But take note, your prepayment can also be considered as an indicator of future free operating cash. Yeah, so if you have a cash in the future, Okay, and you have a high level of property, no, not property, of prepayments, then it, it only means that, aha, uh -huh, 
we have more cash for operations because we're not going to pay for this they are already paid in advance so if you try to put that together okay you now have your cash which you're going to use to buy your inventories as much as possible you want to sell your inventories and convert them into cash just in case they are sold on account you want to collect them as fast as possible so that you will realize your profits if your cash is not enough to support your operations you're going to borrow your inventories from your suppliers okay if you have enough cash and to pay for your liabilities okay, you have to think twice if it's not yet needed no uh, if you're not yet required to pay for your liabilities then it's better to invest that in marketable securities and make it earn so if this is now the process no, that you are doing okay slowing down the payments and speeding up the collections what will happen now to your cash your cash will increase from this relationship we can now go back to our previous slides okay let's try to look at this slide do you think this is favorable or unfavorable okay some would say it's favorable because your assets increased okay your cash increased by 10 percent and you can say that your operations are expanding that's why you also have to increase your inventories to support the expansion and this one is also a sign that you have more customers and some would say that this is unfavorable okay why because although there is an increase in cash of 10 percent where did that 10 percent came from okay did it come from your sales? If you try to look at your marketable securities, there is a decrease of 67%, which means for this period, 67% okay, was liquidated. And look at this. Okay, this can also be considered as unfavorable because okay, it indicates that you're not able to collect your sales. For your inventories, this may indicate that you're not able to sell what you are buying. Prepayments went down by 60%, okay, which means that in the future, okay, there will be more or there will be less cash available for uh, for other transactions because they will now be committed to pay for these expenses. While your accounts payable, although it appears to be favorable because you were able to pay your liabilities, this may also indicate that you were not able to slow down your payments okay so again question is this really favorable or unfavorable it really depends on other uh, on other factors that's why we are saying that this is not absolute okay you still have to review your financial statements other transactions surrounding these changes okay so JDB. This is the relationship and thank you.